on behalf of Pravin Kenneth, Chair of Leadership of the University, I welcome you all to this 15th monthly leadership conversation session on role of academic leaders to transform teaching leadership through sustainable development goals by Victor Paul, head of the Department of Social Work and Sociology, as well as director of Center for Social Action of our university. A few days back, millions of us were shocked and felt insulted when an ugly American described India as filthy um, and its air as filthy. But factually, he was right. This has been the real description of India, not of recent uh, origin, but for the last uh, year. This has been the uh, description of that revered soul whom we call as the lady with the lamb or the patron of uh, modern nursing service, Florence Nightingale of the Crimean uh, War uh, uh, fame. She had described India as a <clears throat> country full of dirt and uh, filth as long back as 1857. But she did that with a good intention. She demanded from the new uh, British government that a Royal Commission on Health should be constituted immediately and sent to India to see the conditions, health and hygienic conditions in India, so that the British soldiers working there will not have the same fate as those who were killed in Crimean War. And because of that, a Royal Commission was constituted in 1857 and sent to India. And their recommendation was more than health. India had to concentrate on sanitation and uh, hygiene. And ever since then, a lot of these uh, commissions committees and so on, have tried to work, work out a health scheme based on sanitation and hygiene. At even now, we are described as a, a filthy or a dirty country, in spite of people like Mahatma Gandhi, Vinoba Bhave, Narendra Modi, or uh, people like uh, Bejwada Wilson, working in this direction for such a long time. Why it has happened? For the last 150 years, things have not changed in India. Why it is happening for the last 160 years, in spite of having enlightened government, both under British as well as under independence. That's because we did not give importance to our poorest, the poor people. They were made to work as a, a, this and a carriers of night soil and so on, which resulted in very unhealthy living conditions in the country. And we forgot the successive governments forgot about the basic human needs of having sanitation, hygiene, basic hygiene in our country. And the result is after so many years, now we are clubbed under the poorest of the South Asian countries as uh, lacking in basic amenities like uh, education, uh, like basic education or literacy uh, or uh, basic uh, uh, this one, health services and so on. And it is reported by IMF and so on recently that by the time we come out of this COVID crisis, we'll be even poorer or dirtier than Bangladesh because Bangladesh for, the, for a long time was considered as a country, uh, there's no poorest among South, East, so, uh, South Asian countries, but we will be joining uh, that uh, rank. What went wrong? In our haste to claim the unrealistic target of uh, 5 trillion GDP growth rate, uh, GDP growth by 2025 or 2024, 
we forgot the basic needs of the poorest of the poor people in our country. And that's why when we close or when we successfully deal with our, uh, the COVID crisis, instead of having 80 million people living below the poverty line last year, we'll be having 120 million people who will be living below the poverty line. So it's nothing to appreciate and uh, nothing to feel ashamed if somebody calls us as uh, we are a filthy country. How to come out of this? The experts have identified that we have to change the attitude towards development. We have to give importance to the basic human needs like safe drinking water, enough, for, enough for, and cheap power supply, then deal with the health and uh, other aspects which make human beings, uh, 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 there's are no dynamic uh, members of the society. And this, uh, this time, the UN has given us a goal. By 2030, we should, uh, we should achieve these 17 uh, sustainable development goals. And then uh, our university has also signed that uh, UN uh, this uh, no, such SDG accord so that we also make a contribution towards this end. At least we can change the thinking or the perception of people uh, of authority towards this. And to guide us towards this path, uh, we have Dr. Victor Paul, who is eminently suited to guide us in this direction. Dr. Victor Paul has the unique distinction of having bachelor's degrees in both economics and law, a master's degree in social work and PhD in sociology, and has more than 35 years of experience in teaching as well as in the field. Prior to joining Christ as a head of the Department of Social Work and Sociology, he had as India country director under this US uh, aid uh, as a project director in various Indian states like Jharkhand, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, mm -hmm. Delhi, mm -hmm. and so on. And we reached as many as uh, four lakh uh, institutions, uh, three lakh institutions in the country. He had also uh, worked as a labor, uh, labor consultant, community development officer, and so on for various agencies like CARE, Tata T, UNICEF, etc. He is also a member of the professional social work body and he has uh, given many lectures uh, both in India and abroad. And uh, today he will be speaking to us as to what we can do in Christ University towards achieving these SDG goals. So, with these uh, few words, I request. Dr. Victor Paul to initiate, uh, to present his uh, ideas and uh, guide us in the discussion. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Dr. Lobo, for setting the tone for this session and also giving my introduction. <clears throat> Before we start, I would request everyone to uh, keep one moment of silence in remembrance of Felix de Costa and the issue does. Thank you. Respected Vice Chancellor, <coughs> all fathers, deans, directors, HODs, coordinators, and all other administrative staff present here. Good afternoon. Let me take this opportunity to thank Praveen Kenneth Leadership Cell, especially Dr. Tony Sam George, and Mr. Samuel and the team for organizing this session especially Dr. Tony Sam George, when he mentioned me about 
the session and as and suggested this sustainable development goal i had two reasons in my mind first thing is that as all of you know we are now collecting data for our times higher education impact ranking so while collecting the data and using the indicators that is the time we realized many departments are engaged in activities which are aligned to sustainable development goals but we don't have any uh, evidences or we have not gathered any evidences especially in terms of activities and research and the second reason is recently in the month of august we have signed academic un accord for sdg and also academic impact so that request submitting data and report once in a year at least and also collaborating with other universities and colleges and also engage in community action so i i i feel that this session will help you to have a better understanding about un systems and also about each department what responsibility as hods and also each school as deans which they can facilitate for promoting the goals sdg goals so before we start i have a small poll so i would request maybe just for three minutes time uh, i would request uh, our uh, pravin kanut sir to uh, launch I mean, that poll over to sam sir guys only 2 to 3 minutes time yes sir sir want to close the poll sir yeah Thank you. okay i'll close that sir you may show the results sir yes sir thank you samul sir uh, so the first question i think 49% has given the correct answer and the second question what are the broad categories of sdg uh, 53% has given the correct answer and the third question how many sdgs are there 63% and the final one which are the sdgs that university has taken up 61% so this is the reality so thank you sir can you please give me the right sir the right thank you thank you sir so um lobo sir has already explained and given us some statistics as you, as he has rightly pointed out the reality is that india is one of the world's 
fastest growing economy but if you look at the human development index of 2018 the country ranks 129th out of 189 countries in the report india also ranks 127 out of 155 countries in the 2017 global gender inequality index deeply entrenched caste based and gender inequalities further economically excluded millions of people in india particularly those from rural areas so i have some statistics which i i will uh, show to you why i am talking about this there is a group reality outside the campus which many of us are aware of but at the same time as a higher education institution we have a responsibility to contribute to the development of the nation and also you will find all these disparities are also seen in the provision on access provision and access to basic services in rural and urban areas there is wide disparities children from rural areas you will know, you know that they are more likely to die before completing age 5 though we have an excellent icds system scheme women and, under the women and child development department now children in states with high levels of deprivation and conflict are more vulnerable than those in states with a stronger governance system so therefore there is a need for us to reflect on sustainable development goals and develop appropriate action by the departments and deaneries so i have three objectives for this session all our participants to have better understanding about the sdg sustainable development goal as you have seen here around 48% of our participants are aware about it and to understand the relevance of sdg in higher education and reflect on application of sdg in christ university so my presentation has three parts first i will touch upon united nations and the sustainable development un system sdg what is sdg and why the background of it and also relevance of sdg in higher education institution and role of education leaders and academia how can we integrate sdgs in our teaching learning and research this is what i was talking about the data this is just i mean i have taken three or four indicators uh, for poverty i have taken the latest available data in india 2011 census 21.9% people are below poverty line and this is 1.25 dollars per per day that is the index which used which is used rank at global hunger index 94 out of 107 countries 94 94th position in terms of children below 5 years underweight malnourished children 35.7 under 5 children are malnourished as per uh, nfhs data 1516 anemia among women 15 to 49 years of age 53% are anemic infant mortality rate per 1000 live births 32 as per srs 2018 data maternal mortality rate ratio for 1 lakh live birth 113 household with access to improved drinking water 75.6 percent that means 24 percent people don't have a drinking water household with access to toilet 47 as per census to 11 and nsso 2019 92.5 but the reality you are aware as uh, sir was saying global sir was saying even now many parts of the northern states and many interior parts of open defecation is still uh, in practice Gross enrollment ratio, um, secondary level 80% and higher secondary 56%. Number of out of school, which includes dropout also 60 lakh and female literacy is 64. This is the reality. Now, I would also briefly talk to you about UN system. Why we need to know about UN system to understand about SDG and which are the agencies supporting that. I will quickly take you to their website. Yes. 
As you can see, even principal organizations, General Assembly on the left side, you can see General Assembly, Security Council, Economic and Social Council, and they also have regional offices. These are the five regional offices. And we are with ESCAP, that is Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific, which is in Bangkok, and Secretariat, International Court of Justice, and which is in The Hague, then Trusteeship Council. Now, under General Assembly, you can see an organization called HLPF, High Level Political Forum. This forum is monitoring SDG on the UN. And also you can see there are several agencies on the UN. And all these agencies have integrated approach for uh, supporting sustainable development goals. You can see there are funding agents, fund agencies who deals with the fund uh, providing to the government also like UNICEF, WFP, UNFPA, all that here, you can see UNDP. UNDP. Then research and training. There are two research and training uh, cell. One is under General Assembly, and another one you will find under Economic and Social. Here you will find, and Social Council. This is an area where universities can uh, collaborate. Even UNITAR has very recently written to us, uh, which mainly has been forwarded to Sunidhi Ma'am's office for further action, uh, for collaboration. And that will help us to help our students and faculty to have mobility and also uh, get training under UNITAR. Yeah, sustainable development goals. Ban Ki-moon, former Secretary General of UN, he said, the Sustainable Development Goals are a to-do list for the planet that will transform the world. Now, these 17 goals are blueprint to achieve better future, but more sustainable future for all. And before these 17 goals, we had Millennium Development Goal, eight goals, which I will talk to you about that. So if you look at the evolution of sustainability, in 60s and 80s, we talked about education in and for the nature. And 90s, we talked about empowerment education. Mushrooming of NGOs happened later part of uh, 80s and the 90s, which who uh, worked in empowerment sector. And 2000 onwards, we talked about education for sustainable development. And we had eight uh, sustainable, sorry, Millennium Development Goals, which was reviewed in 2015. And the major problem here with the Millennium Development Goals was it was top-down approach. Therefore, the whole nations together uh, deliberated about having an approach which is bottom-up. Now UN talks about local to local, sorry, global, than global to local. These are the 17 goals, which is now uh, uh, we are, each countries are working on. Poverty, no poverty, no one is left behind. That is the motto, that is the uh, pledge taken by all the countries, UN associated countries. And these 17 goals have 169 targets and 231 indicators. And the second goal is no hunger, good health, quality education. These are the three areas which university has taken up now for Times India, Times Higher Education Ranking, Impact Ranking. Four, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, and the 17th one, partnership for, for the goals. So all departments are asked to, uh, were asked to uh, submit, the, submit data on this, these four indicators, and also with evidences. Now, each of these indicators, if you look at, has several targets and indicators within that. Due to paucity of time, I'm not going into it. Otherwise, I have given link here. Interested uh, participants can um, log in and then find all the details there. Now, the 17 goals, I have given link for uh, each goals, targets, and indicators also. 231 indicators. In fact, 241 indicators, some of them are overlapping. 
That is why it is at 231. Now these indicators, sorry, these um, goals are classified into three, social, economical, and environment. So these are the classifications. Now, poverty, hunger, good health, quality education, uh, gender equality, clean water, uh, affordable and clean energy, and sustainable cities and uh, communities, peace, justice, and strong institutions. These uh, nine, sorry, these, uh, sorry, nine uh, goals are under social or working for the society. And another five goals are under economy, economical development. And then for environment, climate action, life under, below water, and life on land. Now, these are the classifications which I had asked in the poll. So, the pledge that you and I have taken, leave no one behind, put sustainable development at the core, transform economics for economies for jobs and inclusive growth, build peace and effective open and accountable institutions for all, forge a new global partnership. So, these are the five Ps. In fact, the three Ps, people, planet, and prosperity, Another two, uh, goal number 16 and 17, are contributing and uh, supporting the other goals, peace and justice and partnership for uh, achieving the goals. So under people, uh, 4, 5, 6, 10, planet, 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 goals, prosperity, 1, 2, 8, 9, and peace, 16, and partnership, 17. So recently, 24th October, we had, we celebrated uh, 75th anniversary of UN. Even our university also, several departments and the CSA students also observed. Now, along, along with the 75th anniversary, there were several meetings and committees and discussions. So what the UN observed, SDG is already off the track, especially in the context of COVID-19, this pandemic. Uh, it is hard to achieve the SDG goals as it was envisioned in 2015. So resources are not sufficiently being mobilized and growth is inclusive and also, and also world's richest 1% have more than twice as much as wealth of 6.9 billion people. Just 1% people have more than 6.9 billion people. And this is the reality. Now, what is the reason for this? Uh, the reason for this is that after COVID, as many as half a billion people could be pushed into poverty additional 100 million people into extreme poverty, and 130 million people into the brink, brink of starvation. 70% youth, especially India is concerned, we have that, we, uh, we have that demogra demographic dividend, and where who, st who study or combined study with the work have been adversely affected. Now, anything that we do on this uh, sustainable development goal, Will have it directly Im will have an impact on the world uh, data, as India is having the highest. I mean, going to be the highest population. And the pledge taken was in uh, 2018: leave no one behind and build back better. Build back better pledge is taken last year. So these two pledge now every country, every organization is has taken it up. Now. High-level political forum, which I mentioned, which is monitoring SDG, and they have yearly uh, conference and also once in four years. And ECOSOC, Economic and Social Committee, uh, is organizing this conference every year, where we can also part of it under the volunteer uh, voluntary national reviews. And there are various uh, programs which you can organize under this, especially at the Bangkok office. Uh, office for Asia Pacific, and they do a thematic review. So by the all stakeholders, I will uh, I will come to that. Who all are the stakeholders? And the second uh, meeting is under General Assembly every four year. This meeting is organized, and that is when all the data is compiled and from the from all nations participating nations compiled and analyzed. Now relevance of SDG in our higher education institution. As it was already mentioned by Lobosar also, um, economic growth is an important factor, and many of our uh, departments are, in, if you look at our subjects, are focusing on any one or some of these 
or many of these areas. Inclusion, we talk about resilience, reduction of mortality, raising uh, living standards, adaptation to climate change, safe drinking water, efficient energy, and we talk about people, planet, prosperity, peace, and friendship, partnership. Now, how SDGs can help universities and how universities can help SDGs? As you will see here, create increased demand for SDG, where universities can create increased demand for SDG-related education. In fact, um, last year, we our department was uh, you know, taken up one subject and the choice-based course, MSc Sustainable Development. So like that, departments can take up or, you know, you can start some new courses related to SDGs. Provide a comprehensive and globally accepted definition for responsible university. Offer a framework for demonstrating the impact. And you can create, we can create new funding streams in collaboration with other agencies. Support collaboration with the new external and internal partners. These are some of the areas where SDG can help universities. Universities can also help SDG by providing knowledge, innovation, and solutions to the SDGs. Research an area where we can contribute. In fact, when we were collecting data on uh, times ranking, impact ranking, that's an area where we have researchers, but we have not uh, nowhere we have documented or connected our researchers with SDG goals. Now, Times uh, Ranking System, they have also contracted, have a contract with Telsiva. How they uh, get information? They use um, keywords related to SDGs, and they can reach to the research work that we have done. So that is an area where we can focus that wherever SDG, if we can connect to SDGs, we can have keywords on that. Create current and future SDG implementers. Demonstrate how to support, adopt, and implement SDGs in governance, operations, and culture. Develop cross-sectoral leadership to guide SDGs response. So these are some of the areas, but I have specific suggestions for the departments, which I have already planned here. I will show you that. Uh, these are the groups which I was talking about, major groups, and other stakeholders. These are stakeholders under our UN SDG program. So link is given here. Um, women, children, and youth, all of them, all, all of these groups can participate in discussions and deliberations and activities and be part of the UN uh, system. Local authorities, workers and trade unions, business and industry, what will I have highlighted um, with our departments are working with, or our centers are working with these groups. Scientific and technological community and farmers. These are the other stakeholders who can be part of UN. Local community, volunteer groups, foundations, migrants, families, older persons, persons with disabilities, private philanthropic organization. And these two are recently added, educational and academic entities. So these are some of the systems where our departments can uh, explore later. And uh, there are possibilities of uh, joining some of their activities and working with them. Higher Education Sustainable Initiative, 2010. This was started in 2010. Um, I think a lot of information is there, data is there. I would request you to visit that. And then uh, wherever possible, you can be part of it. Sustainable Development Solutions Network. This is again, uh, Bangkok office have, uh, has their cell there, so or we can work together, work with them. And United Nations uh, Economic and Social Affairs, UNDSA, UNDSA. Um, all the data system is managed by UNDESA, uh, and uh, many of our research work also we we can access that. You can visit this website. UNITAR. This is what I was talking about. Uh, was invited us uh, last week. We got the invitation to be a part of them. United Nations Institute for Training and Research. So these are some of the areas where we can work with UN agencies to promote SDG. Access to dialogue forums, public policy initiatives, student study tours, 
global conferences, direct collaborations, research, publication, UNSDG project implementation, scholarly work, youth leadership, disruptive innovation, advisory transformative education. Interested uh, faculty members can visit the website and wherever possible, you can be part of that. So now the question is, what we can do? Now, um, this year, we have signed um, UN SDG Accord and also UN Academic Impact. So UN Academic Impact aligns institutions of higher education with the United Nations activities to realize the goal of SDG and also promote protect of human rights and access to quality education, sustainability and conflict res resolution. So this is an opportunity for us as a university, uh, the departments, what all activities we are doing. If you document it and also uh, evidences, we need to collect evidences. It can be uh, in the form of photographs or maybe your reports in the drive. We can collect, we can uh, create links for that or in the website. I also feel strongly feel that our university also should have a website uh, somewhere SDG should be shown in the website so that all the department activities can be shown there. So this is a uh, UN SDG accord, which we have signed in August, where um, uh, we also have a responsibility now to conduct activities. Each department, we need to undertake uh, some activities under SDG, maybe uh, the goals which you, uh, your departments are aligned to. Not necessarily that the goal that we take up for university reporting. Now they have also changed their indicate, I mean, system of assessment. Other than the goal, four goals that we take, we can also report on any other goals where we have done some exemplary work. So this uh, SDG Accord has two uh, fold objectives. The first objective is to inspire and celebrate and advance the critical role that education uh, institutions are playing. And value it that brings value that we bring to the government, the business and wider society. So we need to uh, report those activities, undertake and report those activities. And the second objective is um, to prepare an annual report, which also gives us an opportunity to be part of high level political forum. We can present our report there, we can be part of it, and that will be uh, acknowledged there in their website. So these are some of the areas as a education leader, uh, leaders we can um, focus on. Our curriculum design, when we make or update our curriculum, we can think of some of these um, SDG goals. And also we can create awareness and teaching role, awareness and teaching role. That means as a teacher, we can also, wherever possible, we can create awareness among students to take an active leadership role in these SDG goals. Research role. This is one area where we can do very well. Um, in a way, when I look at most of the uh, areas, SDG goals can be connected with our research on all the departments. And we can also play a collaborative role with other institutions and government systems and evidence-based knowledge role can be there, can, we can have that. And also help the governments and systems. In India, Nidhi Aayog is uh, coordinating this uh, SDG goal activity. Under Nidhi Aayog, there is a particular cell where uh, a senior IS officer is posted there. So who is monitoring uh, these goals? So uh, assessing, evaluating, and also we can play an advocacy role among other institutions. And also we can have direct engagement with the UNITAR. I hope that now the request came to us, we can, that will give an opportunity for us to collaborate with the UNITAR also. So under UNDSA, uh, we can attend official meetings of the forum, and we will also have access to official information and documents, and participate in official meetings. And also we can make recommendations, and round table, we can also take part in roundtable uh, meetings and uh, conferences. So now I have some suggestions. I think another 10 minutes, I will take you through um, some suggestions for 
our departments and unities uh, on all the 17 goals. So, uh, Dr. Sam, Dr. Moses has helped me on this. He also contributed to these ideas. Um, under no poverty, the first goal, we can ensure an excellent placement record in all streams and all departments and document it. And scholarships to be offered specifically for students, meritorious students from lower income backgrounds. Collaborate on initiatives within community that look to tackle poverty locally. These are some of the areas. There are so many areas on the poverty as an education institution we can do. We can also work with the communities where we are working through CSAs and centers, other centers in all the campuses. And under zero hunger, we can work on lessen the waste of leftover and improve nutrition by offering lessons, conducting awareness classes, maybe some monitoring mechanism in our canteens, or uh, maybe uh, training, creating awareness among students. Collaborate, collaborate on initiatives within the community that look to supply fund, food packets to the local neighboring underprivileged sections of society. Uh, so this is another thing which we can, through our students, students, volunteers, we can uh, organize this, or departments can organize this. Create initiatives on organic farming, a project where students help to grow food in the villages and neighborhood. Organize drives and campaigns to create awareness. Now recently, uh, two months back, we also joined Mahalma Gandhi National uh, Council for uh, Rural Engagement. Under that, five sectors, uh, our university is taking part in five sectors. Um, first sector is hygiene, and sector, second sector is waste management. Third, uh, water, safe drinking water. Fourth, energy. And fifth one is uh, greenery. So um, life sciences department will help in uh, greenery. Uh, physics will help in uh, energy. Uh, chemistry will help in uh, water, for clean water monitoring as well as water audit, all that. Uh, commerce department will help in uh, sanitation and social work department in, sorry, commerce in waste management and social work in uh, um, sanitation. So these are the five areas. Maybe departments can on rotation or maybe part of this. And this is Government of India program. So that also uh, focus on sustainable development goals. Good health and well-being. Design and implement curriculum on good health and wellness. Not necessary that the departments follow these. They can have their own program. These are just indicative suggestions. Create a local healthy lifestyle activity framework for students. Structured counseling and mentoring program for students. Create a help desk cell for the local neighboring community. Broadcast creative information on wellness among different education institutions and social media. Quality education. Create a lifelong learning opportunity for our community and build partnership with the schools, colleges. Encourage a culture of research. Also create a culture of competitive excellence such that majority of our students get quality education and complete the qualifying examination successfully. Look at an upgradation of curriculum and assessment strategies for quality education. So I'm not going through all this due to lack of time. Maybe um, you can go through this, this will be shared with you all. You can also develop uh, ideas on this. Department can take, I mean, uh, generate ideas on this and also uh, take up uh, maybe two or three goals every year or maybe continue to work on that. Or you can have a phased manner, you can take up this work on these goals. Gender equality and clean water and sanitation. This is what one area which I said we can link with our Government of India schemes also. Under Government of India, we also have uh, Unnad Bharat Abhiyan, which also, government also provides some small funding on that, which also pro uh, promotes sanitation and hygiene in villages. We have adopted six villages in Oskote. So those villages we are working on with the community, with the panchayat, 
working on clean water and sanitation. So that's an area where uh, departments can also, uh, maybe you can take your students, they can, you, there is an option for opportunity for collaborating with that, working with the panchayat. Affordable and clean energy. So here uh, we can also, uh, me, through media networks and social media, if we can organize campaigns on uh, electricity, clean energy and clean, uh, saving electricity. Decent work and economic growth. Industry, innovation and infrastructure. If uh, departments can organize partnership with at least one Fortune 500 company to ensure annual placements in that company on a regular manner. So that also will contribute to goal number one. Reduce inequalities. Encourage and publish research paper on social uh, justice. There are also somewhere I have mentioned that at least our students uh, take a target of one publication every year on any of these topics, sustainable development goals. If you develop that culture in our departments, culture of um, working on uh, such socially important uh, topics and um, connected to SDGs. Mm -hmm. Sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production. This is goal number 12. Again, we have some holistic education classes also on minimalism and some of those areas we, we uh, talk about. Uh, we can link that, we can connect that also with holistic education, all of our other activities that we have um, while creating awareness among students. Climate action and life below water. A government of India has not taken up life below water and life on land. These two, um, Nidhi Ayog, um, has not taken up for data. Um, maybe they may take it up, but as of now, it is not in their um, list. Peace, justice, and strong institutions. This is an area where we can also work with several other institutions, also agencies, working on peace, justice, and strong institutions. And finally, partnerships for the goals. We have several MOUs with international -like organizations and uh, national organizations. And many of those MOUs we are working towards maybe student uh, welfare or student or education, promoting education or community development. So all those can be connected with uh, this particular goal. So I stop here. Um, I think uh, there are areas where um, departments and deaneries and institutions, other centers can uh, take it, take up and uh, develop programs and activities based on this SDG goal. Due to limited time, if you uh, talk about SDG, a lot to talk about each and every goal, and a lot of data is there. But I thought with the limited time to give you an information about things and what are the possibilities for uh, working on this, I thought I will uh, limit to that. Then maybe you can explore and take it up uh, as, as, as you have the resources. So thank you. Let us build a sustainable future together. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Victor, uh, for your uh, such a nice presentation. Of course, we have a lot of things uh, uh, to discuss and study and so on. Uh, I, I think we may need uh, more than uh, no, one session. Maybe uh, we will see in future also we could have some kind of uh, assessment uh, sessions on this uh, this one. So now I invite uh, a few questions from the uh, participants. If they have anything to ask uh, with uh, Dr. Victor Paul, you may uh, ask those uh, questions or give suggestions. Maybe you can have some discussion on 
what all things we can take up under this SDG. Yeah. yeah. So one thing that uh, you, know, you had already uh, informed us that we will have that MSc Sustainable Developmental Studies course. And I think uh, you know, uh, two, three departments may have to come together uh, for this interdisciplinary course. But that other thing, other proposal that we can uh, take is under our add on certificate courses, maybe we could think of introducing a, pro, uh, a course on SCG uh, goals and uh, assessment. But uh, uh, we have this system of add on uh, certificate courses. There we could think of this, and only thing is we may have to identify which department or center will do it. Any suggestions from the participants? What's the screen visible, sir? Yeah. Yes, visible. Uh, okay. yeah. Any thoughts how we can collaborate with UN uh, Academic Impact and uh, UN Accord? I think for each agencies, we need to spend time to discuss about it. And each of them, when you visit the website, you will find a lot of areas where you can collaborate. You also get the data from on each of those areas. Sir, yeah. good afternoon. Good can, afternoon I, can I just, yeah, just, I think it was a beautiful presentation, a lot of ideas. I just want to know all these uh, slides that, you know, of the 17 goals, all the information that has been put in now, right now is from you, isn't it? It's you uh, put down. Yes, yes, we as a team, uh, Dr. Moses, Dr. Bob also during our discussions, we a small group uh -huh. working on SDG. Huh. So, uh, in fact, we have been working for the last uh, couple of months when we started working on UN Accord, signing the Accord. Okay. Impact. Okay. So these, uh, are, yeah. these are not from UN. These are from, uh, you know, practical things which we can do. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah sir. And uh, actually, since you've been giving some uh, insights, you know, and you have also said that some departments can take it up, I think as Dr. Lobo just mentioned, a uh, much more time is needed to go through all of this because uh, as you were explaining itself, you know, because you went from one slide to the other very fast, even before we could read and kind of digest it. I think some more time is needed, but these look like very concrete plans. And I think, you know, when you have been bifurcating and you said this department can take this, this department can take this, it kind of makes more sense, you see, and uh, makes us think also quite intensively on that. Thank so, you sir, for such thank a lot of thoughts. Thank, thank you, you. ma'am. I had only 45 minutes time. So, yeah, I could see so, you were rushing through. Yeah. This is, this is here. Ah, ma Mithila here. Yeah. Thank you for that wonderful, uh, insightful presentation. So taking off where Malika ma'am was uh, mentioning now, you mentioned that Commerce Department can take up waste management. Yeah. Now, to give us now, if this is going to be a theme that we as a department has to follow it up. So, what do you suggest? We have to do it in action. We have to do it in our research. Uh, we have to do probably bring it in our conversations. In what ways? How all can we go about it? Sir? Yeah, good, ma'am. Actually, I mentioned that in the context of um, uh, SEC and REC, uh, that the cell which we have developed here. Um, now, Valarmati Ma'am is all the uh, part of it. She got training also as part of CSA. She got training from uh, Government of India, Ministry of Education under this Mahalma Gandhi uh, National Council. So there are five faculty members who are training on that. Uh, Valarmati Ma'am from Commerce and then um, Dr. Amaresha from Social Work and um, Dr. Parry from Life Sciences. Then um, Sudha Dr. Sudhakar, Y. Sudhakar from Physics sorry, uh, from chemistry, and then uh, Manoj sir from physics. So um, all these five people are part of this cell. 
and um, since they are from respective departments, I thought that that particular department can take it up. And you can organize the training there by these trained people, so they can organize the training. And under that also, there are a lot of indicators which we can we have to work on within the campus and outside the campus. Now, for example, now water. We need to our students and faculty. In fact, we have connected with some students also, student volunteers, and they can undertake water audit, um, then uh, ensuring safe drinking water in the community as well as in the campus. So like that, ma'am, if you can have a meeting, I mean, probably you can ask her to take a training uh, for your staff, then probably you can get associated with that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, uh, one uh, suggestion, see if, uh, of course, this is not the immediate uh, word, but this is a suggestion I have for uh, all the HODs and the program coordinators here, is to see in what ways you can integrate the system development goals within the curriculum and the research of the department. In fact, uh, the uh, in, uh, School of Business and Management is first of avatar as the Institute of Management. And actually map the entire curriculum of uh, uh, Institute of Management to SDG. I don't know if uh, George Kurian is here, so he would know uh, better. So, George Kurian, are you here? Would you like to hear? Yes, 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 sir, I am here. Okay. Uh, shall I uh, uh, speak, sir? Uh, Logo, sir, can you speak? Yeah, yeah. Dr. Chaji, you could get yeah. a yeah. as to know uh, yeah. what kind of you know uh, this curriculum you have for those MBA courses. You yeah. Know, yeah. This is a change you know, that that you could explain so that yeah. other heads of the departments and uh, board of studies could think of having a small yeah. course in their uh, curriculum uh, to uh, about these SDGs. You could explain to them as to what uh, you know changes you have brought about. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, sir. See, when we uh, plan the uh, the uh, the strategic plan 2018-23, we said that uh, you know we will focus on two areas. One is uh, sustainable business management, and uh, the other area is uh, how technology will impact uh, businesses. I mean, you know, for our so, so one focus area, entire focus area was sustainability sustainability business management that uh, naturally gets aligned with uh, sdgs so every course uh, sort of wherever possible a yeah, part of sustainability a part of sustainable business management that was sort of incorporated in addition to that we have a separate course on sustainable business management this is a general course at a strategic level this uh, sustainable business management in addition, we have another course called uh, Sustainable Operations that is at a much uh, uh, lower, I mean, a, a operational level, how practically what exactly you do on ground. So in two levels, we have two courses in our MBA program. So that is the, the course part. In addition to that, we also have, a, a, you know, something similar to a, a service learning program where all our students also go to an NGO all of the MBA students, uh, it's a mandatory uh, credited program where they work with an NGO or a uh, company CSR organization and uh, uh, do uh, a, a sustainability related activity for uh, uh, some time. There are, there are guidelines. So that is another thing, uh, you know, all, all our uh, students are doing. So these, uh, these are some of the focus areas through which we sort of uh, uh, try to bring in the culture of sustainable business management in the entire MBA program, MBA, MBA curriculum. Uh, so that I think it uh, it uh, sort of uh, uh, aligns with uh, uh, these these goals. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, Lobo sir. Lobo sir. I would also request uh, now participants if you could look at the polling uh, again now in the chat. 
Um, so now you will realize that there is a need for um, you know deeper understanding and also discussion on SDGs and how that can be. Especially now, um, we had taken up four goals for university to report, and which was circulated widely with all departments. And many departments are working on it now. Data has not come back. So you will find that um, you know um, around 17% of the participants here could uh, correctly tell that uh, goal number four, five, six, and 17. So that means we need to uh, little more attention to these uh, SDG goals. And I'm sure all, most of the departments are having um, activities related to that. But somehow uh, we don't document it or somehow we don't create collect evidences on that. Yeah, no, a lot of work has been, uh, this one now is already going on, but we are not uh, documenting uh, documenting it uh, properly. Maybe uh, after this, you know, we should have follow-up sessions so that uh, people document whatever uh, they have achieved. Like uh, as far as uh, uh, water and uh, sanitation is concerned, we do a lot of uh, things. And now I think we have to extend uh, these uh, ideas to our other campuses also. And uh, again, to generate some kind of an interest among our uh, students towards this, uh, th uh, these uh, kind of ideas like clean air, water, and so on. Maybe since we have uh, you know, uh, four uh, active campuses in uh, Delhi, Pune, uh, uh, this one, uh, Bangalore, uh, three campuses, uh, I don't know, maybe our engineering, uh, you know, uh, faculty people could tell us, we could think of uh, installing those uh, measuring devices to measure the air quality of our campus, campuses, different campuses, and publish it every day, maybe at a uh, given time, maybe uh, 2 a.m., uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Hello, in, in the afternoon. Uh, yeah, in I was in the meeting, Father, that uh, leaders meeting, yeah. In, uh, in uh, uh, maybe the engineering faculty people can guide us. Uh, they could install. I don't know uh, what would be the cost, in, but we can uh, think of you know uh, just uh, publishing our air quality index for different campuses. Uh, like uh, so, right now Delhi people are suffering from all these uh, air pollution, whereas Bangalore the things are better. Pune may be better, but. So, but when we have this system of uh, announcing, maybe you know the students will also uh, uh, generate interest in these kind of aspects. And then uh, again, the second area that I think is when you are speaking about clean water and so on. You see, our uh, Central Pollution Board or Green Tribunal, uh, they have been uh, uh, this one uh, measuring the water purity of various uh, rivers starting from say Western Ghats, now one or two rivers like Hemavati and uh, Kaveri could be selected. And when we send students for those uh, uh, colleges, you know, we, are, we, are, we have adopted some colleges in Chikmangalore district. Uh, so when our students go there, uh, they could uh, train those uh, local students to uh, find out the you know, water uh, quality of uh, uh, the river, uh, you know, in their uh, in their own area, share the information. Uh, so these kind of extension activities we can think of uh, uh, like that. Maybe we will uh, you know individually work out some of our ideas and share them with uh, Dr. Victor Paul. And whatever is possible, maybe we could uh, adopt. And that way we can bring in a uh, lot of uh, understanding about this concept. Uh, let us see. Uh, yeah. Sir, may I speak? Madhumati uh, here. Yes, yes, Dr. Madhumati. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sir, thank you. And Victor, sir, thank you for the presentation. Uh, ever since that mail about SDGs and how we have to fill out all the information about SDGs has come up, I've been looking at the UN website for what is it that we are supposed to do as a university. And uh, the list of uh, case studies that they have shown in the website are so similar to what we already have in our campus. 
that I just wondered if there is one office or one um, e uh, either one group of people who are just collecting information and reporting it to the UN. I think we will have enough and more programs that we already do in the university. Uh, even the last meeting that we had when uh, we were talking about um, the HODs and coordinators meeting on best practices in the university, there was a list of programs that so many departments do that you know everybody was sharing the in, the programs that they have done so far, and most of them are on environment, on um, you know clean air, on water conservation. There are some uh, uh, people who do for even uh, what the hotel management does uh, for hunger, relieving hunger, and and what the university does to provide for food for people who who can't afford it. All of those are practices that are listed in the SDG um, in the United Nations website about SDGs. And these are the case studies that some of the universities have put in. And I I thought that if we can all collect all of that information, I think we have enough or more programs, which maybe we should uh, in we should tell the uh, or at least report it to the United Nations as things that we've already done or things that we continuously do. And I think, I mean, I don't know, maybe the reporting of it is not as clear as uh, we would want it to be, but I think we are already doing many programs and we should be reporting it to the uh, United Nations. Yeah, the, uh, that's what we have been doing things, but then uh, uh, we may have to improve the reporting uh, system. I think. Uh, and uh, that is the main intention. That's why we have that, you know, uh, even while filling the Times uh, impact rankings, we are taking the help of uh, many of those. Uh, this one. And then uh, other faculty members also, they could volunteer. In case we have information, you can share that with the Office of the Registrar. We'll include that. And they will tell you as to how to record it and establish a, a new link for STG activities. Yeah, it is welcome. Uh, this Anybody else want who wants to respond or give any suggestion or uh, make uh, any comment? So, Doctor Victor Paul, shall we conclude? Yes, Some, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, so thank you, uh, Dr. Victor Paul. We had if Tony sir, or, uh, if Tony yeah. sir wants to say something, actually initial idea was uh, given by sir only. Yeah, Dr. Tony. Um, thank you. Nothing more to add. I think the presentation was very comprehensive and helpful because we want to ensure that what we do is in alignment with the uh, sustainable development goals not just for ratings and rankings, but also to demonstrate our commitment to uh, society and to the generations that will follow after us. I want to just thank you, Dr. Victor Paul, for opening up this narrative to the university. And I hope, and I can see from the feedback that it has been quite helpful to the uh, administrators present in today's meeting. And we really look forward to seeing how different departments can contribute to this. So I just want to say thank you to you, Dr. Victor Paul, and also to Dr. Lobo for uh, moderating the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, I would like uh, Dr. Anil Pinto, our registrar, to just uh, the concluding remark. Dr. Anil. Professor, thank you so much. Professor, the Thomas, previous vice chancellor, is called Professor, the silent worker. And uh, he is behind many things that are uh, silently happening at the campus. Because the national studies program that is there, uh, he yeah, he involved in getting the program started. And uh, uh, of course, uh, now up uh, in the session development, he's also uh, quietly championing the cause of SDG campus. Did a few in the last two and education science, but I said. Not for time settings, it's just secondly because our uh, come schools, talk up is, is, is what our vision and uh, core values are about. 
that as well. We need to give space and uh, uh, so big thank you to Lobo for I mean, that app that you shared it and, uh, uh, and, and, and suppose you spoke to Dr. Victor Paul and uh, Lobo bring in very different uh, professional background to Christ University. Public servant or central government in some other yes, mind. Uh, yes, ambassador to Tajikistan earlier. Uh, so he's done a lot of the country, but he also brings in this large international perspective. Uh, University, some member states related to privacy. So it's only apt that he shared this, and I'm glad. Uh, uh, thank you, sir, and thank you for the video call. A lot of passion and. Uh, Uh, it's uh, amazing, and I hope that uh, or both of you will, you know, make a significant mark in this transition journey. Uh, I was very impressed when when I first heard in 2018, strategic plan of uh, then Institute of Management, now School of Business Management, which was aligning to SDG, very very meticulous detail. They asked any department how to have a session from them. That absolutely amazing. Uh, but uh, but that was only one department. But now we are trying to see how a university, a university is considering to be curriculum DNA, not just because what the advantage of curriculum is that then the teachers will talk about it, students will learn about it. It's the larger, you know, as a increasing profile is becoming such that at least in certain programs we have a large number of students who have no idea of the kind of background they come from. That becomes almost a responsibility for us to ensure that we get into Mind, because we are the change transformers of the IT that we are creating. So, a big thank you, and I hope this uh, really catches on. Uh, Dr. Tony, there are two announcements I would like to make, if I may. Of course, sir. It's good. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. So, uh, just to, of course, uh, uh, sorry that this is to all colleagues of uh, Felix, who uh, passed away, Felix uh, from the uh, Today and uh, uh, today, uh, I pray for the rules and as um, And uh, uh, we uh, on what, last Saturday, Board of Management met and has uh, approved the new center for the university, center for human resource development, or human resource development center, HRDC. Uh, earlier, we had academic staff come. If we had brought out a new regulation, wherein they have uh, not regulation guideline actually. They have tried to move away from the academic staff from the concept to uh, human resource, which means that human resource center is both for teaching and non teaching, it's not just for the teaching uh, faculty. So, uh, uh, so we are doing that, and so, but we have tried to broaden the concept and we have set up the uh, uh, set up the put a put on Saturday, but by Sunday, we will next to this. So, uh, we, uh, we, and, uh, and uh, notification. So what it will do now, the structure is that we have more this development center, and under that we are bringing in the existing center, that is uh, the academic staff college, which is renamed as uh, staff development uh, college, uh, headed by Dr. Blue George, and um, our card headed by Dr. Dawn, and the setback headed by uh, Dr. Kennedy. Of course, they will keep doing independently what they want to, but just in, in terms of trying to report things, so then we you know try and uh, do things. Some coherence uh, because all three are involved in faculty development and any institution or outside. That's the kind of a work that is. And uh, I'm pleased to announce that for the Vice Chancellor has appointed Dr. Xavier C. from the uh, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, uh, School of Engineering and Technology, Kingery Campus, as the director of the Center for the Human Resource Development Center. He, he, he comes from corporate, uh, of course, he did some IASC and many other institutions. Uh, uh, done a commendable work both as a corporate person and his publications in academics and as a global network. Uh, but he retired as the uh, vice president of Chuck Jimmy. And uh, so we hope that he will put a good foundation both in practice and theory to the new center. He's not here, uh, uh, but Mr. Uh, this is uh, from my side. and. Uh, um, with this, if there's anything else to ask, I can respond. Otherwise, back to you, Dr. Thank you, uh, 
uh, this leadership chair uh, that will remain independent of uh, the human resources center or uh, yes, yes sir yes it will remain uh, independent mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pinto. I think we can now conclude the leadership conversation session. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Lobo. In fact, Dr. Lobo br brought the whole idea of sustainable development goals to the university as the registrar has mentioned. So thank you very much, Dr. Lobo, for anchoring this session. And thank you once again, Dr. Victor Paul, for making this very uh, informative and important presentation to all of us. I'd also like to thank my colleagues at leadership chair and the technical team.